Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials as well as give a lot of baking business tips. And today I made a matcha flavored cake with a matcha flavored soak and also a strawberry compote. Now to make this compote, it's really, really easy. All I do is I cover the fruit with a little bit of granulated sugar. It's really up to you how much you put. I start with a quarter cup to about two cups of fruit approximately. Put it over medium heat until the fruit is soft. Remove the fruit and then reduce down that liquid until it's to the consistency that you would like. And then I use an immersion blender to really blend that up. Now what I'm doing here is I I'm using a matcha soak. So it's really just a simple syrup, which is one cup of granulated sugar with one cup of warm water, and then a bunch of matcha powder in there. The reason is, even though I baked the matcha powder into my vanilla cake recipe, baking flavors in won't always yield the strongest results. So I use the soak. Now I know a lot of people throw some shade at using a soaker saying it's because your cakes aren't moist enough, that's why you need one. But in reality, when you're making highly decorated cakes, things are constantly going in and out of the fridge, which opens it up to drying out. And this way, once you're finished decorating, even if it takes you a long time, you're still going to be left with a moist and flavorful cake. And I should add that you can really use any type of vanilla cake recipe that you want, or you can even use a box vanilla cake and you can make it matcha by just adding in that pure matcha powder. Now you'll notice for the cake, I did a really thick dam in the center because I only did two layers. I sometimes find if I do more than two layers of cake, things start slipping and sliding around and the ratio of filling to cake is a little bit off because that cake is so small. Now I used Italian meringue buttercream for the crumb coat here, but honestly, it's only because I didn't have pasteurized egg whites on hand. If I did, I would have used the faux Swiss meringue buttercream that I discovered not too long ago. Definitely go and check out this video in the right hand corner if you wanna know why I would use that instead. Now for the outside here, I'm actually using American buttercream. Now the reason for this is actually threefold. The first reason is I'm lazy and this is one of the easiest buttercreams to use. The second one is eggs are getting very, very expensive. So I'm trying to save my eggs because I tend to actually eat a lot of eggs throughout the week myself. So the more eggs I can save, the better. And three, I am making my all about American buttercream tutorial for you guys. No, I did not forget about that series. It's just that Vlogmas came, so I had to put it on hold. Now it is very cold in my house right now, so I left this buttercream sitting out for just a little bit, no more than 10 minutes, and already I can see that it's lost some of its silkiness. This does happen with buttercreams when it's cold. All I do to fix that is I heat up my spatula, make sure that you're not doing this with a plastic spatula, it must be a metal spatula. I do this with my torch. If you don't have a torch, you can use your gas stove element, or you can run it under super, super hot water, and it'll do the same thing. Now, I didn't spend too long making that perfect perfect because I'm taking this glider here and I'm running it through so that we can get those stripes. Now I used to be really bad at using this tool but I'm getting better and better at it. The trick is to make sure that you take off enough frosting and then really fill it in with that piping bag and then you got to keep going with the spatula. I remember I used to just swipe once and then I thought man it's really messed up and it's not right. You got to keep swiping until you see it. Now I know there's a few bubbles here and there still. I could have gone through here did that spatula again, did it a little bit more, but I knew I was going to be adding detail all over this cake, so I didn't worry too much. I got these sprinkles. I was out and about getting a few things for Valentine's and just to refill my stock of supplies, and so I saw these sprinkles that were super, super on sale, so I decided to get them. Now I'm going to make some multicolored buttercream here, and you'll notice that I piped everything out into the plastic wrap, and then placed the whole thing into a piping bag that is fitted with a tip, and actually, this is a great way to save your piping bags as well if you want to. It's a little bit wasteful, but sometimes when you're running low on piping bags, you gotta do it because the plastic wrap actually saves your piping bag from anything. It really just doesn't touch at all if you do it correctly. So I thought I was giving you guys this wonderful angle of how I did this seashell kind of border. Uh, yeah. I didn't, I'm sorry. The best tip I can give you though is you really just gotta find your groove when it comes to borders. Nothing is worse when the border is all over the place. Some parts are thicker and some parts are thinner. So if you want to, you can definitely practice on other things first and then go ahead with your border and make sure you're giving that even pressure the whole way through. Now these cakes are all part of my dino treat boxes for Valentine's Day, so I really wanted to keep it fun and classic Valentine's cake-esque, but I also wanted to have those fun elements of the dinosaur in there, so I decided to add on the edible grass. 
Now, if you want to see how I made the entirety of this cake, I have a short coming up that features this cake. I just figured it really just follows the same principles, but I'm using a leaf tip on the edge here, and I'm also doing a bunch of different floral things on the top. And I really wanted to show you guys how I made that rose, but uh, it kept getting cut off because my camera kept overheating and turning off. I love this camera, but that is the one downfall of it. So luckily I was able to show you guys this part here, which basically follows the exact same principle as the rose. You're really just doing kind of little mini arcs and then you're overlapping it. If you want it to look more like a succulent, overlap it more. If you want it to look more like a rose, make it more of a rainbow and more sweeping and less of them. That really is the only difference and it uses the exact same tip. You can use whatever petal tip that you want. I'm using a straight edge petal tip. I just find it works really, really well, both for roses and for succulents. And to get this green color, which I really like whenever I'm doing kind of succulent-like cakes, I always mix in a little bit of that pink buttercream. And of course, going in and adding those little bits of grass as well on that cake. I decided that this cake also needed a few of those leaves. And I'm just using a classic leaf tip. You want to squeeze, stop squeezing, and then pull away, and then you'll create a beautiful leaf. I also added in those little blue hearts there because they match with the cake pops that I made. And the cake pops have this like light blue thing going on and I felt like the cake didn't have that at all So I decided to add that on I let those cakes rest in the fridge while I created this element here So all I'm doing is I'm going to place a fondant dinosaur on top Actually, I used gum paste for this whenever I'm doing standing characters I use gum paste just because it is going to harden a lot faster However, if you don't have gum paste on hand You can always mix fondant with a little bit of Tylos powder and you've basically created your own gum paste now I'm just using a little bit of water to adhere everything together and I did get these cutters from a sponsor that I had a while ago but I'm not sure if they're still selling these anymore however these types of products are now so readily available which is fantastic so I'm just sticking on these little dots here and there not really using a cutter for that I want it to look a little bit imperfect now I'm placing this straw down making sure that I'm cutting everything to size so I'm using the cutter that I actually used before I place it on and I'm just adhering everything with a little bit of buttercream on the back and now I'm using a little bit of edible paint. You can easily use vodka mixed with a little bit of gel food colorant. By the way, I mostly use Chef Master food gel and Americolor food gel throughout this whole tutorial. And I'm going to give this a little bit of a cartoony look because the macarons that I made that go with this have that same look. So I want to make sure that it all looks like it goes together. And for the other cake, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to use different colors for this. It's really just the opposite colors. And I also dyed my fondant today with a little bit of fondus, and I also had to use food gel colorant. If you're not familiar with working with gum paste or fondant, then all you really need to know is you need to put cornstarch down if things are sticking to the surface, or you need to mix in a little bit of shortening into your fondant or gum paste if it feels like it's too hard. And here are the Valentine's Dino Cakes. I absolutely love them. They're so cute. They could be used for your boyfriend, your girlfriend, or your kids. I love that. And I will be sharing with you guys pricing as soon as I publish the video with all of the treats that go together. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!